Hey everyone, so uh, I created a new project on Xcode. Um, I just named it HStack. Uh, so you have a couple of menus here. We have this like little sidebar menu. It's a new Apple sidebar symbol. You're gonna see this in the iPad a lot. This is all our files here. Um, mainly, we're gonna be working with just the shared files here. Um, this is, you know, if you wanna make this app for Mac as well, um, you know, you're gonna have to, these are just the files for that. Then we also have over here, which kind of, let's close this. You can actually close this by command, clicking command zero. Um, this right here is like kind of like an options or uh, yeah, an options screen essentially. Uh, I'll give you an example. If we go to assets here, um, this is like, think of this right here as like a breadcrumb menu. Uh, so like these are all bread, see these breadcrumbs leading up to like these files here. Like I can really just use this to navigate instead of opening this every time. But if we were to go into assets, I did just want to show you an option real quick and uh, I add a color asset. So like, as you guys know, you can add colors, right? Um, and if I double click one, it gives me these options right here. I can name the color. I can then add a hex code, right? I can add a hex code if I want to. And, oh shoot, just dropped my mic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, let's just dive, I'll, I'll, we'll go over that in another episode. I just wanna get, get you guys familiar for those who just started. But we're gonna dive into H stacks, right? Now I want you to, now I want you to think of an H stack. It's very simple. Um, uh, pretty much what it's doing. Sorry, I just wanna make sure this is recording correctly. Pretty much what an H stack is doing, um, build to seed it. Auto launch H stack. Okay, so sometimes we have things, sometimes we have errors like this, guys, where, uh, let's see here. Sometimes we just have to quit out. Sorry, let me quit out my messages. Um, Xcode beta. Sometimes we, you know, unfortunately Apple just has some, some bugs, Xcode has some bugs. See if we can resume now. Build succeeded. Failed to launch. All right, you know what? We'll do we'll we'll, we'll do an, we'll do something different, right? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna open this back up, and we're gonna create a new project, and we're gonna call Learning H Stacks. Next, I'm gonna save it in this in this folder that I save all my folders on, and we're gonna come in here and we'll click resume. Whoops, click resume on this guy. Let's actually stop, try again. Build succeeded. Usually takes a little while, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is just uh, part of the beta uh, until it, until it, um, until they fix, you know, these issues. Um, but let's just go over an overview while we're waiting on this because we need this preview in order for me to teach. So what's great about SwiftUI, I love SwiftUI because it feels like a, a no-code tool. Um, and what's great about a no-code tool is like you're doing less coding, right? It's a lot of already preset code. Um, as you can see here, you know, this, this text right here is already a, pre, is, is a preset code. Um, and here we go, finally. And what this is doing, um, this is pretty much telling Swift UI, hey, like we're gonna add some sort of text uh, to this to this preview or to the app, and then pretty much how we're gonna be coding from now on is we have an element and then we can add modifiers to it. So in this case, this padding is a modifier to this text element. So the default padding on each side is about 15 pixels. If I take this away, click delete, you're gonna see that box goes around. There's no padding. Okay, so. What we're gonna start with is we're actually gonna command click, command click this, and you can actually embed into a H stack. Or you could click command shift L, and these are a bunch of modifiers um, that you can add. So if I click H stack, you can click H stack, and it's gonna bring one right in there. Um, so we're not gonna do that. I'm just here to explain what H stacks are. So what H stacks, just imagine, that they're, they're called horizontal stacks. So think of it as this, if I see a design or I have a design and I want to put two elements right next to each other horizontally on the same line, I'm going to want to use an H stack. If I want to stack things on top of each other up and down, I'm probably going to want to use a V stack, which we'll get into the next episode. And then if I want to stack things on top of each other, 
where there's different layers where maybe there's an image in the background and text on top of that image, then I'm gonna wanna use a Z stack. And we're gonna break all that down. Like I said, these aren't gonna be long videos, but to give you an idea, an H stack is gonna stretch across the whole screen, essentially. And what you can do to make sure that it does stretch along the whole screen is you can add a frame, a max width, and just do dot infinity. And then it will definitely, see it'll definitely stretch, right? So it's always gonna take uh, this, the whole screen up uh, on a phone, which is always good because you wanna make sure this can help make things responsive. Now, something to, to, to think about here is like, you know, what if I wanna add like a symbol, like right here? What if I wanna add a um, house right next to this text right here? Well, that's easy. So it's UI makes it really easy to add symbols. Um, so what I can do is just click, I can actually just type in image, okay? And when I do this, some, some options come up. I'm just gonna start typing system name. When you type system name, SwiftUI is gonna go um, to, uh, SwiftUI is gonna start reading the set strings. These are strings right here that it has in SF symbols. Uh, this is the symbol library for Apple. They have multicolor symbols now, which is really cool. Um, but you pretty much will put this name into this string right here. And I'll show you how to do that. So I wonder, no, they probably don't. I'm just gonna put house. So let's just use house.fill. Okay, so I'll quit out of this and I'll come in here and I'll add a string. And what we're gonna do is just do house.fill. House and this house pops up, right? So the next question, look, this H stack is literally putting these two side by side, okay? And if you wanna put the text in front of it, you just switch it that way and they're gonna switch. So I'm not gonna do that, I like this look. And so what you can now do is, let's just say I wanna put the house all the way 20 pixels off the left side of the phone and I wanna put the hello world all the way to the right but 20 pixels to this side right here. Well, what HTACs allow you to do is allow you to easily do that by just adding a spacer. So when you add a spacer in the middle of an H stack, or if you add a spacer, yeah, in the middle of the H stack, it's gonna space the elements to the side. And what you can then do is come to this image, add a padding dot leading, which means leading means to the right, I mean to the left. And then over here you can do padding dot um, trailing, and that's 20 to the right. Or what you can do is actually come to the H stack right here. See, if you click this, comes the end of the H stack, Put the padding after the frame or it won't work. And you can do dot horizontal 20. So now it's taking everything in here and pushing it in, right? This is probably the preferred way to do it. Now there's another way, there's some other spacing options we can do. If we wanna push this whole thing to the left, that's not a problem. We can just come in here and add a spacer and it's gonna bump it this way. If we don't want it on that side, but we want on this on the right side, do the same thing, add a spacer to the right. So if you guys notice, horizontal stacks can be very useful when it comes to a design. I use them all the time. You're gonna see us use them in the dribble replications, but this is pretty much a brief overview on how H stacks work. You can also, if you want, command stack and H stack again, right? Embed in an H stack, right? So now this H stack right here is into another H stack. And what you can do is you can actually take this H stack and you can add another one. Right, so now we have two H stacks. We have two H stacks inside of an actual H stack and you can continue to keep going. So just kind of keep that in mind, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a brief overview of what the power of H stacks can do. We're now gonna jump into V stacks in my next video, but I hope this episode kind of helped clear things up, help kind of help you understand on what these H stacks do and what it can do. Um, but that's the end of this episode, guys. I really appreciate you coming through and, and listening and, and joining. Please like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you gotta do. I wanna hear from you. I love hearing your voices. I'm gonna keep making these videos because you guys keep telling me you love them. So, you know, I'm gonna keep doing it. But I really do appreciate everyone who has subscribed. I appreciate everyone who has commented and liked these videos and who has also told me things that you don't like about the video because I'm still learning as well, just like you are. So uh, that's really it. Uh, that's all I had to say. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and um, please, please, please stay tuned for uh, some more episodes.